The Good Prisoners The guardhouse at Fort Ontario is next to a long dipping road that runs into the fort from an underpass, over which goes a railroad. The tunnel is long and has heavy stone construction. I am now on guard there. There is a strange way to do this. When someone approaches the fort out of the tunnel, I wait until he is close enough and I shout, Halt! Who goes there? The halted one answers, Friend! Then I shout, Advance, friend, and be recognized! The friend advances. This seems childish to me, as an enemy would hardly announce himself, but perhaps it is some form carried over from the Indian Wars or something I do not understand. I always have trouble in shouting the word, Recognized! Most of the officers laugh. And one night, a new major from Washington, who did not know about this, came into the fort, and when I stopped him, he said, My God, are the Germans this far? And then he laughed and said in that pecu peculiar way Americans speak German, with the mouth too hollow and in back of the teeth, Why get es ein, mein Herr? Since then, all the officers laugh, also the guards. They come out to see me do this and say, Come on, Benny, go get him, do your stuff, and then roar with amusement, as if I were a comedian giving a performance, and they all imitate my recognized. We also have a duty that is called chase prisoners, walking six feet behind them. They wear stiff, fatigue clothes of heavy blue canvas, much too big for them, on the back of their coats, a large P, which means prisoner. They are not allowed to salute the officers, which is no punishment, but we, the guards, must salute. We have different places to chase them, to clean windows in the officers' houses, shovel coal, deliver coal, collect garbage, collect ashes, cut grass, and many such kinds of work. They are not, of course, criminals or prisoners of war. They are soldiers who stay out late, get drunk, argue with officers, and their worst offense seems to be one called AWOL, which means absent without official leave. Two of the prisoners, the nicest, are men who deserted the army to join the Navy, or the other way round, and they are here for four months for this offense. They are my prisoners, and we get along very well. They sing most of the time and make jokes, most of them funny, mostly when we work in the officers' houses. The circumstances of army officials here or for that matter, in any other post, seem to me not overly desirable, very narrow and dull, and more so when there is no war. The houses are all alike, the wives also, and likewise the children. A poor kind of elegance is in these houses. It is made up of white tennis trousers, bridge tables, a few magazines, and a piano. The furniture is bad, the rooms no better than a house that might belong to men like to a man like Evelyn's father, who is a repairman. I feel there must be a great jealousy among them, especially when one has what the others have not. There is one man here who drives a shiny black Packard, which is too long for the carriage, and sticks out of the back all day. It seems to be an object of trouble. He also has a beautiful wife and better riding boots, and at his house the prisoners and I get cake and pie, which is against regulations. The orders today are to take the prisoners to an old fortress and have them chop wood. We get two axes and I march them over. I have noticed that among the grass in the old fort and on the lawns that lead to it, many little flowers grow. They are like our own small, small field flowers in Tyrol. Usually the grass in America seems to me just green, flowerless grass, but here are small white flowers, a little kind of bluebell, buttercups, and also sorrel. The inside of the fortress is beautiful America to me. I people it with such of this country's history as I have thought together for myself. It most probably is all wrong, because I hear that the fort was built against the French. But for me, they were Indians, and I see them riding around, shooting around outside, shooting flaming arrows. The prisoners are hot. They have taken off their coats and their hats, which are as foolish as the coats, like sailors' hats only without any shape whatever, and more like a baby's hat. Blue, stiff, and would be difficult to draw, but it is necessary to complete the rest of the costume. The men have chopped much wood, a large pile of it, 
and it soon will be time to take them back to the guardhouse. In the past weeks, the prisoners have, and I have become good friends. We talk always, even when I chase them six feet apart. They talk loud ahead of, ahead of them, as they cannot turn around, and I answer from the back. The prisoners have both, the prisoners both have German parents, and they have German names. Also, blue eyes, blonde hair, and the shapes of their heads are better because they are born here. They know many German words. There is no one around. The fort is in a close ring around us, and they ask if they can stop chopping. It is almost time to go back, so I say, yes, of course. The sunshine is warm in here, and there is no wind from the lake. We sit down together and rest and talk. They lay back and stretch in the sun, and then turn around and eat blades of grass. One of them asks me if I ever shot my gun off. I say yes and tell them of the affair in ward number three. They both agree that I did the right thing. The other one, Walter is his name, says he is a gunsmith and, a, and small arms mechanic and that he knows all about automatics. He asks if I know how the gun is put together and taken apart. I don't know. I have never taken it apart and tell him this. Then Fred, the other, says, He'll take it apart for you and show you. Of course, I know that this is, complete stupi- is a complete stupidity and against all orders to give a prisoner your gun. It is to laugh, but I like them so much and have such faith in them that I wish not to offend them. But give them proof of my friendship. Besides, if they wish to make trouble, there are two axes with long handles. And another thing is that they have only three more weeks to serve for free. To serve... The only... Ah, and another thing is they have only three more weeks to serve to be free. Therefore, I give my gun to Walter. He pulled the magazine out, took the bullets out of it. With expert simplicity, he changed the gun into little pieces, springs, bolts, screws, everything lay in his lap. He explained the why of everything, put it together, took it apart once more. It was very interesting. Then we heard footsteps from the hall that leads into the fort. I took the part I had, which was the handle, and stuck it in the holster. Fred and Walter picked up the bullets, springs, screws, etc., 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 and started quickly to chop wood. The officer of the day was the one that made the steps. He is young, arrogant, and the only one that none of the men, and not even his own brother officers, like. He looks much like a movie actor and wears a kind of mustache with wax at the end of it. He feels that something is wrong and does not go away. Then the whistles blow, it is noon over in Oswego, and time to march the men back. But the officer comes along, close beside, behind me and follows us to the guardhouse. This is not as it should be. After we got to the guardhouse, I locked the two prisoners in a big cage where all of them are together. The officer of the day is still around, but while he looks down to the underpass out of the door, I stand with my back to the cage so he cannot see see it if he turns around and hold, and hold my hands open in back of me. Fred and Walter put all of the missing parts into my hands. I keep them in back of me and walk over to the lavatory. There I lock the door and sit down. I have seen Walter put the gun together. Fast and easy as a simple toy, yet I cannot do it. I am hot and nervous. Every time I think I have it, it is wrong. The gun falls apart or the spring jumps out or I can't get the magazine in. Therefore, I come out again and move over to the cage. I hand the gun back through the bars, standing again with my shoulders against them, because the unpleasant first lieutenant is still there. I give them the gun parts and all, and Walter goes to his own lavatory with it. There he puts it together and gives it back to me. Now I disappear again to put it back in the holster, and then I can go into the guard room and hang it with with my belt up on a rack where all the others are. And that's the end of The Good Prisoners.